Good day Grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in trigonometry. In this lesson we're going to be applying the error rule. But you'll notice that in this examples or these examples you might have to use other things other than just the area rule. So let's look at this. First of all they're asking us to find the area of W X, Y, Z. W, X, Y, Z. And the first thing we notice is, ah, this is not a triangle. Okay, so what do we need to do? You need to break it up into triangles. So I could break it up like that, but then I don't know what the 120 on, the, what, how the 120 will divide. I could break it up like that, but again, I wouldn't know how the 120 is going to divide. So I'm going to break it up like this which is kind of neat because then we've already got this triangle here x, y and z which is a right angle triangle which is pretty cool so let's do that we can say therefore the area of triangle x, y, z is what? it's a right angle triangle so that makes life very easy it's just a half times base times height which is a half times three times 4, 3 and 4 is 12 and a half of 12 is 6, so that's 6 units squared. Awesome. Now let's look at this triangle. Okay, we can immediately see it's not a right angle triangle and we want the area of this. So do you agree that we're going to have to be using the formula area of triangle XWZ X, W, Z is going to in this case be a half A, B sine C where we obviously need to allocate angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate W to be big C then this will be little C and then it really doesn't matter so I'm going to let this be A and this be B. Right, it really doesn't matter what we call these things. Okay, so now, but you do realize, by the way, that this could have been a half um, AC sine B, or it could be a half BC sine A. It doesn't matter. Either way, these things are going to give you, or any of these ways will give you the area. So we just need two sides and an enclosed angle to get us to get the area of this. So first of all, we've only got one side and one angle. But do you see that using this triangle, we can get C? How cool is that? So how can we do that? Because this is a right angle triangle, so you could either use trig or you could use the sine rule. Or, more easily, we can just use the fact that it's Pythagoras. So we could say that xz is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. It's equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared, square rooted. So it's the square root of 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 25 which is equal to 5. Excellent. So we've got that side there. Now let's go back to the area rule. If we go back to the area rule we see that we need two sides and an enclosed angle. Okay, so now we've got two sides but we don't have a third angle. But we could use the sine rule. Think about it. We've got sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which equals sine C over C. We can use the sine rule to work out one of the other angles. So let's do that. We've got this angle which is opposite this and we have this side which is opposite this angle here. So we're going to work out the equivalent of angle A which is opposite here. So sine A over the little a which in this case is 3.5 is equal to sine B, which in this case, or sine C, which in this case is a sine of 120 degrees, all over 5. Therefore, we can say that A is equal to second function of 3.5 sine 120 degrees, all divided by 5. So we're going to pop it in our calculator. Okay. So we're going to go shift sine bracket 3.5 times sine of 120 divided by 5 close bracket equals 
37.32 degrees. 37.32 degrees. So this angle here is 37.32 degrees. Now I'm changing color because I want to show you something. So now again, if we go back to our area rule, we need two sides and an enclosed angle. So we've got this side and we've got this side. So we need this angle here. But do you agree that that plus this plus this has to act up to 180 degrees because they add up to the inside of a triangle? So we can say that angle X is equal to 180 minus 120 minus 37.32 degrees. So let us get our calculator out again and we go 180 minus 120 minus 37 sorry 37.32 and it comes to 22.68 degrees so that there is 22.68 degrees and finally we can use our sine rule and we are going to use this one here same one all of them two sides enclosed angles so we're going to go the area of xwz xwz is equal to a half times 3.5 times 5 and then it's sine of 22.68 degrees so we get out a pen calculator and we go 0 0.5 times 3.5 times 5 times sine of 22.68 and it becomes 3.5 37 square units. So that becomes 3.37 square units. And obviously we're not finished because they asked us for the area of the whole thing. So let's change. And the area is going to be this, the six units for this, plus the 3.37 units. So the area is six plus 3.37. So it equals 9.37 units squared. And I forgot my squared there. Right, good. Let's look at the next example. It says find the area of the shaded triangle in terms of, in terms of x alpha theta beta and phi. Wow. So we need to get the area of this in terms of all those things there. But if we think about it, that's not too bad because remember that in order to get the area of this, what do we need? We need two sides and an enclosed angle because the area is equal to a half AB sine C. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that side there because we need at least one side in that triangle. So let's get this side, okay? So if I do that, then if I realize that this is a right angle triangle, I can use Sokotoa to get this side in terms of phi and x. So let's do that. First of all, let's write out so so we've got Sokotoa, okay, so therefore we can say, okay, fine, we know that BE, okay, first of all, this here is the hypotenuse, this BE is the hypotenuse of this triangle, this is the adjacent side, and we've got phi, so we've got adjacent and hypotenuse, so we're using phi, so we're saying because of phi, is equal to x over h, which is eb, right? Therefore, we can say that eb is equal to x over cos of phi. Okay, so now we have this side. Now let's see if we can get the next side in this triangle. So I want that side there that side there. So obviously I'm going to be using this triangle on the right. 
So just let's check something. I've got X and I've got fire already. Awesome, life is looking good. Now we want this side, but notice that this is equal to this. So we already know that BC is equal to X. Okay, and I want this line here. So I'm thinking I could use the sine rule because the sine rule says that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which means I could say that BD over sine alpha is equal to X over sine beta. Awesome. So let's do that. So let's do that. So therefore we're going to say BD over sine X is equal to sorry sine alpha sine alpha BD over sine alpha is equal to X over sine beta therefore BD is equal to X sine alpha over sine beta. Right, so now I've got that side and that side. Now I don't think there's a very easy way to, for me to find ED, So, we, but remember that we want two sides and an enclosed angle. But I could get that angle there, so let's just change colors again. Okay, I want that angle there. So do you agree that this angle is going to be equal to 180 minus beta. Therefore, that angle, the green one, which is EBD, is equal to 180 minus theta minus B 180 minus beta, which equals 180 minus theta minus 180 plus beta which equals beta minus theta. There is an easy way that you could have done this. If you realize that this is the exterior angle and those are two interior opposite, then these two have to add up to beta and therefore that has to be beta minus theta. Right, excellent. So now we've got two sides and an enclosed angle. So now we can apply this rule, yeah. So we can say the area, the area is equal to a half times by side A, which is going to be X over cos phi, phi, times by the other side, which is going to be X sine alpha over sine beta, okay, times by, times by green, sine of beta minus theta. Phew! Let's just make that look nice and neat and we'll just do it in one color for the total thing. So it's going to equal x times x is x squared sine alpha sine beta minus theta all over 2 cos phi sine beta. And there we go. Let's just check. Is it in terms of X? Yes. Alpha? Yes. Theta? Yes. Beta? Yes. Phi? Yes. There we go. The area of this little blue triangle there, this shaded in triangle, is given by this scary formula over here. There you go, grade 11s. There you can see how you can use your sine rule, your soccer toa, and your area rule to get the area of an little triangle in the middle of two other shapes. Have a great day. Please practice, practice, practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Bye.